Hey guys, and welcome back to our show. We got a really great lineup for today. Last week we were talking all about combustion and what it took to make combustion inside our boilers. And today we're gonna to dive in a little bit further and talk all about the fuels that go into it and specifically fuel oil. We're gonna do a little experiment here and uh, put some number two fuel oil in the freezer. So be sure and stick around to see what happens. Last week we discussed some of the essential elements of combustion and as well looked at the methods for controlling combustion with regards to our boiler rooms. One of these essential elements we discussed, fuel, for obvious reasons plays a huge role in the process. Now plants can use a variety of fuels and the burners are designed to be switched from one fuel source to another to accommodate these specific combustion needs. It's not uncommon to see where a facility may use a byproduct of their process as a fuel source for their boilers. Now talk about efficiency. That said, before we go any further, I want you to be sure and drop me a comment below on some of the most creative or interesting fuel sources you've seen in your boiler rooms. In many of today's boiler rooms, it's common to find where natural gas is the main fuel source. This is generally considered a clean and abundant fuel source and provides plants with sufficient heating capabilities. Now light and heavy oils are still commonly used and while some may think that the oil burner days are something of the past, this is certainly not the case. Many plants still rely on these fuels for their systems. Whichever fuel is used, one thing that is critical is atomization. First, let's understand what atomization actually is. Atomization refers to reducing something down into fine particles, in this case fuel oil. The fuel must be broken down into a mist in order for complete combustion to occur. Think of it this way, we need to convert liquid into a gas. So by way of burners, this is achieved in most cases by one of two methods, an air atomization or pressure atomizing burner. With the pressure atomizing system, the fuel is pumped into the nozzle with a high pressure pump. These pumps are sized according to the firing rate of the burner and can be further regulated with the uh, fuel regulators. The system forces the liquid through the oil gun into a swirler and tip combination commonly referred to as the nozzle. These nozzles are where most of the flame's customization can be set for different fuels, firing rates, or applications as needed. Some burners may even have multiple nozzles for their oil guns based on its design. Now with regards to an air atomization system, they are similar except only compressed air is being used to create this force needed to push the fuel through the gun and into the nozzle for, to atomize the oil. Now both of these systems are widely used and some systems may be better suited with air atomization while other facilities may benefit more from a pressure atomizing burner. Regardless of which type system is used, the pressure at the nozzle is what is key in achieving proper atomization so we can maintain complete combustion. There are numerous factors that can affect the fuel's pressure. Obviously, clean fuel is essential and insufficient filtration or strainers will lead to dirty or clogged nozzles. Systems should have all proper gauges installed in order to regularly monitor fuel pressures before and after any strainers or other necessary components of the oil trim. Viscosity is also an important variable of the fuel's atomization. Lower viscosity means less friction between molecules and of course less resistance to break apart or atomize whereas a higher viscosity fuel will be more sluggish. A fuel like number six oil would be more viscous and systems using these type oils rely on a fuel preheater in order to achieve proper temperature prior to the fuel getting to the burner and then being atomized. With that said, it's important to understand the correlation that temperature and viscosity have. In the winter months, especially in areas that see sub-freezing temperatures for days or even weeks at a time, the oil supply lines as well as the oil need to be winterized, whether this means using anti-gelling additives, heat tracing, insulation, or a combination of all of them. Here you can see a test that was conducted using two samples of number two fuel oil where a very small amount of anti-gelling winterizing agent was added to one sample. Both samples were then placed into a freezer and sat for four hours. Each of the samples seemed to have thickened up some and the sample without the winterizer began clouding up after only an hour in the freezer. When the samples were removed from the freezer, there was an obvious difference in the two samples and you could plainly see gelling that had occurred in the sample without the winterizing agent. So you can easily understand from this illustration how the atomization of fuel would be affected by low temperature situations and further understand the importance of taking the correct precautions to winterize your boiler's fuel supply. 
When the pressure at the nozzle's tip is negatively affected, the atomization will instantly change and begin to spray unburnt fuel into the furnace. As we discussed last week, this is a situation that then leads to even further problems, so ensuring these burners are getting complete atomization is at, of utmost importance. All right, guys, well, there you have it. I hope you liked this show, and if you did, be sure and hit that thumbs up button, and also make sure and subscribe to our channel. Other than that, we'll see you next week for another Steamworks.